Don't be troubled or afraid. Really, Jesus? Don't be troubled or afraid? Have you seen the news lately? North Korea wants to shoot nukes at us. Terrorism is rampant. The White House is in chaos. Multiple countries are in crisis. Shootings are rampant in large U.S. cities. White supremacists are demanding their right to hate. And we're not supposed to be anxious? Seriously? I sure could use some peace in my life right now. How about the rest of y'all? Oh, good. I was going to ask you for an AM. amen, but you're ahead of me. Jesus offers us peace. Deep inner peace through the means of the companion, advocate, helper, friend, or whatever other suitable name we want to give to the Holy Spirit. We are all hungry and desperate for peace. So why don't we have it? The peace that Christ is talking about is not the way that most people in our world think about it. Peace for many is simply the absence of war or violence. So back around the time of Jesus, before he was born and, and continuing, there was the Pax Romana campaign, claiming to bring peace by squelching uprisings before they could really get going. Thus it was extremely violent, but they argued that they were preventing an all-out war. So they were, in fact, bringing peace. This, however, should not be considered peace at all because it gave the Roman citizens the illusion of peace, but all those conquered peoples around them were oppressed and suffered greatly at the hands of the Romans by the edge of the sword. So peace is not the absence of war or violence in this instance that Christ is talking about, nor in the biblical context in general. Nor is peace the lack of conflict or struggle. So avoiding conflict is not peace. Many of us like to avoid conflict. We don't like to deal with it. But when problems are not addressed and conflicts are avoided, often passive aggression builds up inside of us and it manifests in unhealthy ways, sometimes coming out uh, even worse than if it was just straightforward aggression. Instead, the peace that Christ offers is non-anxious presence. It is a middle way. The, Christ, the peace of Christ is one that dispels fear and anxiety. We heard about it in the story that Jeannie read us about Jesus calming the storm and the words he speaks to his disciples. Peace be with you. The world offers peace, though, at the threat of violence. Like the way we use the term peace officer for our law enforcement. They are tasked with keeping the peace, but they are allowed to use deadly force when necessary. And they carry very clearly a, a weapon that is visible to all. Or when we think of a peace accord, it is often reached within the understanding that if it is broken, international force can and will be used to bring and restore peace. Jesus in the Gospels uses this phrase, peace be with you, time and time and time again. While he's physically with the disciples, when he rises from the dead, that is the greeting he continues to give, peace be with you. And when he physically leaves the earth, he continues peace through the Holy Spirit, as he explains in the Gospel of John. 
Jesus in the gospel uses this phrase, peace be with you, inviting his disciples to let go of their anxiety, fear, and the perceived control they have over the world around them. Here in John, Jesus says that his peace is different, completely different from the peace of the world. Worldly peace today threatens aggressors with the possibility of all-out nuclear war, which nobody wants. Fear and anxiety cannot achieve peace. So Christ demonstrates that His peace comes from the Spirit and is indeed everlasting. Now, Jesus sends to us today peace in the form of the Spirit. We have inner peace available as a fruit of the Spirit dwelling within each and every one of us. Unfortunately for us, this does not mean that Spirit-filled Christians never experience anxiety or fear. Because let's face it, folks, we all do. We can't get away from it. When I was a chaplain at the Children's Hospital in Austin, I would pray for God to take away my anxiety before entering each room of a patient. In the pediatric intensive care unit, I never knew exactly what I would be walking into. Even if I took the time to read the notes before I went to see the patient and their family, Sometimes parents that were awaiting uh, heart surgery for their infant uh, would be completely at peace and calm uh, when they should be experiencing anxiety. Other times, a minor injury would have the parents in all-out hysterics. And I couldn't understand why they would have such a strong reaction to something so minor. So I desperately needed the advocate to go before me and prepare me for whatever I faced. In this same way, the Spirit enables us to move beyond and past our anxiety and our fear. Time and time and time again. Peace is not something that we are given once and it sticks with us and everything is great. We need peace every day, multiple times a day. The gift Jesus leaves for us is lasting inner peace. As human beings, we quickly move out of our state of peace, and we let the world get us all excited and anxious once again. We have pastors that try to say that God gives authority for leaders to use the full extent of their force. But friends, that is not biblical. The only way to come to that conclusion is to believe in a different God and piece together scriptures to justify our own human desire for violence. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, not those who are bloodthirsty and violent. Jesus even scolds Peter, his own disciple and friend, for attacking a soldier even though he was rightfully defending his Lord. Most of us here today, if we were beside Jesus in that moment, we would have drawn our swords and attacked the soldiers as well. And rightfully called that self-defense. But Christ has a different idea for peace. He says, Peter, don't do that. Inner peace allows us to feel at peace and comfortable with our own selves. Peace in our lives keeps us from acting on our insecurity, fear, and hate that is within us. The young neo-Nazi who attacked a crowd had no peace in his heart. There's no way. Who would do that if they had peace in their heart? True peace allows us to not give in to fear and anxiety, and instead look for a different way. 
God's Spirit leads us to reconciliation and radical acts like loving our enemies rather than mowing them down with our car or a gun. Those with inner peace do not advocate for the destruction of others in any way, shape, or form, even if they worry that that might be the only way. We find ourselves in an opioid crisis here in the U.S. because people are anxious and scared. We want to escape the pain and fear of our reality. Drugs, alcohol, and other self-destructive behavior attempt to numb us from the pain, to help us escape the fear, but they do not and will not bring us peace. At best, they will numb us temporarily. <laughs> Until whatever we're using to escape fades away. John 16.33, later on in the Gospel of John, brings us this good news that we can all take with us. Jesus says, I've said these things to you so that you will have peace in me. In the world you have distress. But be encouraged. I am have conquered the world. Thanks be to God. That is the peace that we need. And it is only by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that we truly receive and embrace that peace of Christ. So maybe some of you are thinking right now, Pastor, how in the world Am I supposed to have peace in my life? That all sounds great. I love the idea of peace. But how does it work? The gift of peace is one that we can unwrap every day and hopefully multiple times a day so that we can dispel the anxiety that inevitably will creep into our lives. When distressed and angst sneak back into our lives, we pray, meditate, read scripture, talk to a spirit-filled friend, or whatever you need to do in order to reconnect with the living God. When we are at peace with ourselves and God, then we will be in the best place possible for handling the troubles of the world. This is because peace is knowing Almighty God, creator of the heavens and earth, and knowing that He's got this. The Lord is in control. God, we proclaim, is sovereign over all. So even if we find ourselves in the midst of nuclear war, our sovereign God is still the ruler. He is still in control. We may be consumed by fire and fury, but Christ has conquered the world. Christ has conquered the world. And we will be at peace. Friends, I would prefer that it not come to nuclear fallout, but maybe, maybe it will take human beings being on the brink of extinction before we'll wake up and get over our selfishness and put it into our violent ways. But I pray it doesn't come to that. My hope is that people will see another way. I, for one, will fight for peace! Oh, wait, that, that doesn't sound right, does it? Okay, let me, let me try again. I will struggle and strive for peace. I will do whatever I can to be a peacemaker. But I will not lose too much sleep over the fears of the world because Christ has the victory and offers to all of his followers the gift of peace. Sisters and brothers, once we realize that we are not in control, 
say enough, we're not in control. Peace is much easier to accept. Jesus is victorious over death and evil. That is what we proclaim in our faith. Christ has conquered the ways of the world. And best of all, we have been given the Spirit to be a constant source of peace in our everyday lives. No matter the circumstances, no matter what's going on in our personal lives or the world around us. God grants us peace. This peace I give to you. I am with you. Peace be with you. Do not take in the peace that the world is trying to offer you. Because it's as fake as the pox Romana. It is no peace at all. So, beloved, let us not be consumed by our fear and anxiety, for we serve the Prince of Peace. And to that God be all the glory, now and forevermore. Hallelujah.